five, four, three, two. I feel like the camera a little crooked. Ain't it crooked? All right, my bad. No, we recording that. Better. That's better. Okay. Sabbath peace. Sabbath. Another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, saints watching in on the camera, to the saints that we don't even know about around the world, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. So last week we talked about um, the book of Ezra, right? We opened up Ezra and we saw how we haven't even actually started talking about the man Ezra yet, but we've been talking about the book of Ezra. And in the beginning of the book of Ezra, it talks about how our people by King Cyrus was, uh, was commanded to, or not commanded, but it was opened up for our people to go back to our land, right? For the 70 years it come back, the prophecy of uh, Isaiah and the prophecy of Jeremiah was being fulfilled. We get back to the land. We start to build. We get some resources to do that. So we starting to put stuff together. And we talked about last week how the people were looking through our law and they were looking at, well, what can we, how can we rebuild this thing? So they used the designs from Moses law for the altar, right? And they started to rebuild the altar. And they also, you know, started to rebuild or they re restructure our people. So mostly the people that went back initially were the priests, right? It, were the, it was the priest mostly for the most part, because the purpose was to kind of set everything up, get everything back in order. So the regular folks, not, a, you know, not a whole lot of the regular folks came back yet. It was mostly the priests. Right. So we go back, our priests setting things up. They start to get sanctified and set themselves apart and they start to do sacrifices. again. And that was kind of the beginning of our return back to the land. So that's what we're about to do right now is kind of pick up from right there. We left off in Ezra 3. We're going to pick up Ezra 4, right? So this is Ezra chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto Yahuwah, God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel, and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Er Esar Shaddon, king of Asher, which brought us up here. Right, so you look at this and you have these Gentiles, right? So these Gentiles is looking down at us and they looking like, hey, let us build with you. Why would they say that? Right. They said, let us build with you. They saying that because they've been living in our land all this time. Right. So they like, let us build with you. We serve the same God that you serve. Right. Watch what our people say, though. But you, do you remember people, last week when we was talking if some people came and they was like, yo, we Israelites. Right. They told us they was Israelites. Then we start going through the books and we like, mm, you can't prove out who your daddy was. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who your, what's your daddy name? Okay, all right, but you can't prove out who your family was, so you just stand to the side. It's like, you cool, you know what I'm saying? I love you, but you not. I, I can't prove that you're an Israelite, so I can't help let you help. So even our own people, we were skeptical of them if they couldn't prove their bloodline. If they couldn't come to us and say, this was my dad, and this was his dad, and that was my dad's dad, and that was my dad's dad's dad, and that was my dad's dad's dad, dad, right? And just keep on going all the way back until they tie back in to our people. If that couldn't happen, we was uncomfortable with the situation. How much more you think it's going to be if a Gentile pop up and they talk about, yo, 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 let us build with you. 
know what I'm saying? You mind if I build with you? I mean, we serve the same God you got. Right? Watch how we responded to him. But Zerubbabel and Yahushua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto Yahuwah, God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Right? We look like, no, nah, this ain't got nothing to do with you, boy. Right? They popping up. Hey, you mind if I, we help you out? We, we, we after the same thing you after. Like, no, nah, this, this one ain't got nothing to do with y'all. You know what I'm saying? We'll take care of this one on our own. This one ain't really got nothing to do with y'all. Right? And so we told them, go ahead and be on their way. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and leave it alone. We doing what King Cyrus told us to do. How do you think the Gentiles felt about that? Right? They not going to feel that one too much. You, try, you mean tell us we can't, we can't participate in this stuff? And they really do think they serve our God. Right? And the reason why they think that, grab... Um, Grab uh second second Kings uh chapter seventeen. Well, I want it probably further down, but let's just start at verse one. This is second Kings chapter seventeen. Right? So if we were to look up here on the on the on the on the screen, this takes so we we right here, right in the timeline. We about right here. This takes us all the way back. Right, all the way back to right here. Right, that's about 720, 718 BC. So that's about 300 years, right? 300 years before the time period that we're reading about right now. 300 years ago is about what we're about to read, right? That was peace, Sister Sharon. So 300 years ago, watch this. This is uh, Second Kings. Chapter 17, Hoshea, right? Hoshea is our king, King Hoshea, or he's the king of Israel, right? King Hoshea, watch this. Well, verse 1. Verse 1. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, Shalmaneser, King of Assyria and Hoshea began, became his servant and gave him presents. The he gave him what? Presents. All right, he gave him presents. That means he he was paying he is paying his taxes and paying tolls, right? So he gave him presents. What else? The king of Assyria found conspiracy conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria. Right. So now. You know what I'm saying? The king, of, the king of Assyria had it set up to where it's like, oh, you just keep sending me gifts and everything going to be all right. Right? King Hoshea was like, man, I ain't doing that foolishness. So he started working with the king of Egypt. He started sending messages to Egypt like, yo, 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 we shouldn't mess with this dude no more. Right? Trying to, trying to form a conspiracy. In other words, trying to form like a little secret group. group. So then, uh, keep going, watch this. And he had, done, as he had done year by year, therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. Right. So because because Hoshea didn't give his gifts, he stopped giving his gifts. Then he heard about all these secret messages that he planned with the king of Egypt about. At that point, the king of Assyria was like, oh, we could be about to shut all this down. So then he came down and he encamped against the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, right? This is how the northern kingdom ended up, ended up getting exiled, right? So keep reading. Watch this. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. For so right? So Israel, our brethren, the northern tribe, they got taken out of our land in Israel and got put in these other places like Havilah, right? So in our Bible in the year reading, y'all might notice that we read about a place called Havilah. Whoever got the objective, whoever doing the objectives of uh, uh, locations, you probably noticed that we, we talked about this place Havilah already, right? And so now this is one of the places that our brethren got sent to. But watch what else happened. Keep going. 
For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against Yahuwah, their God, which had brought... Jump on down to, like, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Colta and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvam and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Right? So now, not only did he take people of Israel and put them in places in Babylon, but he took people of Babylon and different areas around Babylon and near Babylon and placed them instead in Israel. So these are the Gentiles that are in our land. But watch this. Keep going. So it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not Yahuwah. Therefore, Yahuwah sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore, they spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, the nations which you have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore, right? So the people, these Gentiles, start getting ate up by the animals in Israel. Right? And so they were superstitious. They looking like, oh, this is happening because we don't know the God here. Right? Watch, watch with this. Watch, watch, watch what you do. This is what the king of Assyria do to address that. Therefore, he has sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry there one of the priests whom you brought from there, and let them go and dwell there, and let them teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear Yahuwah. Right, but what was wrong with this priest? He wasn't a son of Aaron. He wasn't a son of Aaron. Remember, the priest, we read about all this stuff, the priest were set up by Jeroboam, the first king of Israel. And he made it so that anybody could be a priest, right? He didn't have no requirement on, 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 on being a priest like the Most High God did. The Most High God said, you got to be a son of Aaron, right? He made it so that anybody could be a priest, whoever they wanted to be a priest. So this priest that the king of Assyria sent over to teach them about God, the God of our land, they weren't equipped to really teach. So they teach these Gentiles the same lies that the, the uh, northern tribes used to follow, right? So that's how you get to this point where these Gentiles are looking at uh, the people that came back to our land. If we fast forward and go back to where, you know what I'm saying, we had about 50, uh, 538 uh, BC, we, now we fast forward and back up 3, 000, I mean, 300 years, right? Now... These Gentiles are looking like, oh, y'all building y'all land back up, huh? Let us help. But we see their, their origin. The only way they got to the land is because it was a land transfer, right? The king of Assyria said, I'm going to take y'all, put y'all over here, and I'm going to take them, and I'm going to put, put them where y'all was. So they took over our land. They took over our customs because the king of Assyria gave them one of our priests to teach them the customs of the northern kingdoms. But those customs are not according to our law. So therefore, the Gentiles thought they were serving God. So when they talking to us, saying, oh, we see y'all building y'all stuff up. Let us help. They thinking, yeah, we all serve the same God. But we don't. It's the same thing that Christians do, right? You have Christians, you got Muslims. And in their mind, they might think, yeah, we read the same Bible. We serve the same God. But no, we don't. Because my God tells me I can't do no idolatry. So it don't make sense that you walking around with a cross on your neck. That I mean, that how that makes sense if if the God I serve in the Bible I read say very clearly that you can't make no graven image of anything in the heaven above, anything in the sea beneath, in the deep beneath, anything on land, any animal on land, or any man. I'm trying to figure out how in the or any graven images say. I'm trying to figure out how do you get away with a, a cross? How do you get away with a Jesus piece? How do you get away with a flying dove? How do you get away with a fish on the back of your car? Right? How do you get away with any of these things when the Most High God said very specifically, none of these things can be done? You can't look me in the face and tell me we serving the same God. And so that's exactly how we looking at, we, that's how exactly how we looking at these people. Right. You can't tell me as a Christian, God loves you no matter what you do. And the most high God I see say, I abhor the, the sinner. I hate the sinner. 
right? The Christian got to tell you, God hates the sin, not the sinner. They're like, no, 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 that's not what the book says. The book actually says, all right, grab real quick. This is Psalm chapter five. Give me verse four. Because I know it's a Christian. I can just, I can feel a Christian watching right now. Christian looking like, nah, see, that's why I can't. This brother, he just teaching gloom and doom. That's what, you know, that's what Christian love to say. Just gloom and doom. I just want to make sure we get it right and we understand what the book say. You know how long these people have been teaching us lies about the book? And you can't get mad at the individuals that's learning. You got to get, I get mad at the teachers. I get mad at the people that stand themselves up and they assume the responsibility. Ain't nobody gave it to them. They assume the responsibility of teaching the word of God and they do it haphazardly, right? They, 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 they leave crumbs. It's a mess. They confuse people. They teach people lies. They comfort people who are committing sins and they make people feel bad for trying to be righteous. They'll call you self-righteous if you tell them, you know what? I just want to stop sinning all together. Well, brother, you know, you can't. And that's impossible to Right, but no, no, I just want to give it a try. I don't want I want to keep the law. This that now, brother, that's legalistic. You keep the law, you don't you don't believe in Jesus. Right? They tell you all these silly things to confuse. So now you trying to do right, and they make you feel bad for it. And then they turn around and they see the, the drug dealer, the ex-drug dealer pants sagging, the woman, her her darn busty air and everything else just popping out, and she come in, they clown, oh, come as you are. Right. They make them feel good about hypocriting and cussing and going to steal and lie and do all that other stuff. We can't be that way. We can't accept that stuff. Right. The people will never get right like that. Right. We got people right now listening to this study. Right. That that struggle right now. They getting pure, good teaching from us. But they struggling right now. As soon as this study come out, they got to go to an environment. That's tempting them of sin all the way around. So if you get good teaching and you still get tempted with sin to the point that you fall, right? How do you think you're going to stand a chance these people making you feel like, oh, you know, just try your best. Just give it a best shot. That's not to say you've never read nothing in the book talking about some give it your best shot. You've never seen the most high God say anything to anybody at any time talking about, I just want the best out of you. No, he set a standard. This is what you got to do. You either there or you not. Because who determines who are, what's our best? Can I tell, Mel, can I tell you what your best is? I'm going to do that. I'm going to be like, man, I don't feel like you were doing your best. What's the problem with what I just said? I don't feel like you're doing, is this thing ain't about feelings? Nothing that we got going on is about feelings when it comes to this book. None of it is about feelings. Right. All of this is about fact, objective fact. You a sinner or you not a sinner. And if you a sinner, your mindset got to be, I got to cut this stuff out. Then you're going to tell them, man, but it's so hard. Man. It's so hard. I know. But then you got to break it down. Each individual. What was my last sin? Yeah, I cuss. It is hard not to cuss. OK, but. Is it impossible to stop cussing? Is it, are there people in the world who don't cuss? So we know it's not impossible to stop cussing. Right? Maybe, maybe I'm a liar. I be lying all the time. Okay. Maybe it's hard for you to stop lying. Is it impossible to stop lying? Are there people in the world who don't lie? Well, then it's not impossible. There's a bunch of liars now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. It's probably, probably hard to find somebody who don't lie nowadays. But it's people in the world that don't lie. That's not an impossible thing. We be looking at the whole picture. We be telling ourselves it's impossible. Not impossible. Name one sin, one at a time, that's impossible to stop. And if, you, if each one is possible for someone to stop, then all of them are possible for anyone to stop. It's just a matter of, are we going to go through the work, the inner work, to get ourselves there? Are we going to trust God? Or are we going to put in the work? A lot of times, we just want to, Outside of the people that watch, you know, study, you know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of times people go through life and they just want to live their life. And then for one day out of the week, pretend like, you know what I'm saying? You know what? I got hope. And it's just an energizer to take them to the next end of the week. 
That is not a way to live. That's why you got to get out of these churches. These people be in church. You got to get out of them. All it do is energize you, go to your next week, energize you, but you never learn nothing. Right? You never learn nothing. People spend so much time online. All they're trying to do is figure out doctrine. What they mean by doctrine is teaching, and that's interpreting the book. So they try to figure out how do you interpret this book? You put this verse with this verse, what it means, and they never going to understand it because they don't know what the book says. Right? You trying to interpret, you skipping steps. It's a brother, it's a brother, you know what I'm saying, uh, a Mexican brother, you know what I'm saying? He is outside of my house. You know, I get a little, you know what I'm saying, after the event that happened to me last year at my house, I get a little uneasy people get to walk around my house. I be like, you know what I'm saying? So I asked him, I'm like, hey, hey, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Why you in front of my yard and why you walking so slow? You know what I'm saying? You all right? You good? So, you know, he starts stuttering because, you know, I probably came at him a little aggressive. You know what I'm saying? So he starts stuttering. He's like, uh, 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 now I'm just walking. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad, man. Y'all can tell you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't trying to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? You got a little soft voice. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you ain't trying to do that. I, I appreciate my fault. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And then he stopped. He said, have you heard of the gospel? I said. I said, oh, 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 you got the right one today. Come on, come talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Come on, come on over here. Come talk to me. So I brought them all in the house. You know what I'm saying? He was like, are you sure? I was like, what, you going to rob me? Come on in. You know what I'm saying? So he sat down. I started talking to him about the word. And what I told him, I was like, have you done this before? He was like, no, nah, it's my first time. I was like, what made you offer the gospel to me? And that's not something you've done before. He said, well, this YouTube showed me this living water. I was like, have you talked to this man? His, his videos move you, right? Like, don't ever learn from anybody online if you can't talk to him. You can reach out to this man, go for it. You can't talk to him. You ain't got no way to, you know what I'm saying, talk to him or talk to his staff or talk to somebody. I understand you running a big old operation like me. If our stuff got big, y'all best believe I ain't going to make myself available to everybody. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's craziness, right? But... You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, Brother T, you got to take some of these calls. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, yo. We're going we gonna, to we gonna build some Brother Daniel. You know what I'm saying? All the brothers, we're going to build them up. And then when we, we can, then we're going to set up a sister line. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, Sister Pam, I need you to take some of these calls. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. Like, we would have to spread it. We have to figure it out. Right? So I understand. I'm not, I'm not saying because you can't talk to the person on camera. Right? But if you can't talk to leaders in the ministry and you call yourself learning from them, that's crazy. It's never been set up that way. It's never been set up that way, right? When we when we was being led by Moses, we could complain to Moses. When we thought something was wrong, we could go to Moses and be like, yo, 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 I don't like it. Why you got us out here? Right, wrong, or indifferent, that is the responsibility of a leader. If you call yourself a leader, if you call yourself a teacher, and you ain't got to deal with the people, I don't know what that is. Right. So you, you, you don't have no business just getting on YouTube and just surfing videos. That's crazy. You find you someone and you make sure you can speak to them. Right. And once you know that you can speak to them, once you know you can have a conversation with them and learn from them. Right. Most of God ain't sending you nobody to learn from. You can't talk to that person. That's crazy talk. All right. So I told him, I was like, you know what I'm saying? No, you don't want to. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do that. Let me let me ask you, what is the gospel? He's like, oh, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. I was like, yeah, no, right. You know, that's right. But let me explain something to you. So I started breaking it down for him and giving them more information. And then I showed them one of the things I love to go to is the uh, story of Martha and Mary, where Yahushua came into town and Mary sat down at his feet to learn. Right. But Martha was going around and she was trying to serve everyone. She is trying to get the plates together, make sure everybody was fed and all that. And Martha got mad. She looked at Yahushua and she is like, why in the world is she sitting down and she see me stressing out trying to make sure everybody taken care of? Why don't you tell her to help me? Right? And he said, listen, he doing what's needful and what she's doing will not be taken away from her. Right? That's something we have to think about. It is needful for us to learn. And learning is not just, oh, yeah, you know, I heard the I heard a sermon today. You're not learning from those. Right. You're not learning, especially not in a Christian term, but even even this. Right. Even this, when we teach, 
you learning surface level stuff and we go deep and we you still learning self surface level stuff right we doing real learning right now when we reading the bible together that's real learning right cuz we get to sit down we get to discuss details we get to talk about it ask questions figure it out that's that's how you really really learn the book you challenge your thoughts right these people not doing that and i appreciate the dedication of y'all that's doing it with us right but that these people are not doing that. So what it does is it makes your role very difficult because you're going to have to fate each and every one of us. When I stop talking, when this video go off, every one of us got to go back to our lives and the temptation is waiting for us. Every last one of us. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. We go to these temptations and we fall. What we learn, what we talk about, what we read has to be enough to carry us through the day carry us through the hour right we can't do this stuff and we just think you know say, oh i'm gonna go to church on sunday morning and be a hypocrite and then go out and become no that's craziness this stuff gotta be the rest of our life it gotta guide our entire day it can't be something like okay oh whoo, i watched bible study this week we good right who i went to church this week we good i went to moss this week we good no man you're a sinner you're a sinner you gotta get this stuff together and challenge yourself to get it together Make it unacceptable until you, until you get it together. Look at yourself with disgust until you get it together. Right? It's the only way to do it. No excuses. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we play around and we, we joke and we do all this stuff. But at the end of the day, our soul's got to be saved. Right? If our soul ain't saved, ain't none of this stuff worth it. None of this stuff. And I ain't talking about these people. You know what I'm saying? These people that ain't thinking about God, I ain't thinking about them. But for y'all who think about God and the people we know who thinking about God, they souls got to be saved that they taking this thing. So it don't make no sense. It don't even make no sense to be sitting here reading the Bible in a year and doing all this stuff if it don't change our lives, right? If it don't change the way we react, to change the way the way we do things, all this stuff is pointless. That'd be crazy to restrict. Can you imagine? I'm going to wake up and every night before I go to sleep, every morning I'm going to pray. Then I'm going to go to church three times a week, right? And then I'm going to um, I'm going to go feed the homeless. Right. And I'm going to serve tables and I'm going to be an usher. Right. I'm going to do all this stuff. I don't change my behavior and I'm still going to hell. You know how much partying I could have been doing? That's crazy. Like, why would you not change your behavior and then restrict yourself in all these areas? No, if you're going to sin, just go sin. But if you're going to be righteous, if you're going to serve the most high God, challenge yourself, push yourself. And if you fail, push yourself a more. And if you sin again, call yourself a liar. I lied the last time when I said I repented. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. This time I'm serious, though. You keep repeating that until you get it right. When you go to lift up your eyes, but them things don't lift, you go like that. And then it's just like, oh, that's it done when you dead is it we don't know when that clock is gonna stop right so just keep keep at it keep doing what you gotta do i don't even know where we is at what were we about to read oh, psalm, psalm five. five we about to do psalm five give me psalm chapter five give me verse four but you are not this for the guy. christian because i know we got some christians watching so you know sometimes you got to talk to the christians directly christians is stubborn boy this is uh psalm chapter uh five verse four what the christians say but thou art not a guy that has pleasure in wickedness he said, thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness. He, in other words, you don't like when people are wicked, God. Christian be like, yeah, amen. No, God, you know what I'm saying? God can't fellowship with darkness. Christians agree with all that. Watch this next one. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou hatest what? All workers of iniquity. Some of them. The ones that like, like the workers of iniquity that like know that they work in iniquity. That's how Christians always try to move a goalpost. They tell you, well, no, that's different, brother. So like some of these people know, like that's because they don't believe in Jesus. No, no, no. Even the workers of iniquity that believe in Jesus, he hate them too. I'm trying to figure out how a Christian feel like they can get away with not being hated when our own people got hated. Didn't the prophet Hosea say he said, 
He said to Gilgal, I hated them there. When we were in Gilgal, he said, I hated Ephraim there. He hated us. How a Christian feel like they can get away with it? Like, no, nah, God can't hate me. You know how, you know how, you gotta go you know to how arrogant that sounds? That's just crazy to me. Psalm 11, 5. Psalm 11, 5? Yeah. This is Psalm chapter 11, verse 5. Let's see what it says. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loves violence, his soul hateth. He hate them. You love violence. Let me see. You dudes that, you know what I'm saying? I run my household. You put your hands on your wife, right? You put your hands on your girl. What that mean? Violence. And how, how y'all feel about that? Hate it. Boy. Weak boy. Weak boy activity. Weak boy activity. Sorry boy activity. You know what I'm saying? And be the main ones. I see these brothers all the time. Some of them, I should call y'all by name because y'all disgust me, boy. Ooh, y'all boy disgust me. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of these boys, I respect some of their teaching, too. They smart. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these boys call themselves teachers and book writers and all this stuff on our topics, about Bible topics, about where we come from as a people and spend all day online criticizing black women. Criticism of women in gen general, but they real targeted black women. How is that a leader? How is that a man? You can't find no fault in what men do, but you find all the fault in what women do. That That's weak, even, boy. That ain't even scriptural. Ain't nothing scriptural about it. Who the first person that y'all talked to after, after? Who ate? First of all, who, who, who pulled the fruit from the tree, ate it, and then gave it to her husband? Mm. Jeez. She dead wrong, ain't she? Who the most high, most high God talked to after that? Adam. Please. What I'm going to sit here and talk to Eve for? Why would I talk to Eve when it's a man right here? You take responsibility. If you feel like the black woman in America is horrible and she messed up, then guess what that means? Guess who you got to talk to? The men in America. Why don't you be a man and set a standard? You know how many of these women couldn't wait for a man to just set a standard? Stand up and be like, no, nah, you ain't got to do it this Do it this way. I got you. Don't worry about it. And yeah, it's going to be some work. And yeah, you got to have some patience. And yeah, you got to work with them. But that's what a man do. Soft, weenie boys. All you all want to do is walk into an already made up situation. Don't want to build nothing your darn self. Lazy, darn, weak men. And don't want to take care of your darn kids. And always got darn it. It ain't no excuse to not take care of your darn kids. Everybody want to be like the. Man, y'all about to make me darn mad. Everybody want to be like the, like the, like the edge case. I used to have a psychology teacher. I used to like him. You know what I'm saying? But he used to tell me. He was like, on average, when young men go to high school, they all weigh about. 150 pounds, right? And usually it's because they're tall and they're building muscle, right? So they weigh 150 pounds. So on average, that is going to be the, the, you know what I'm saying, the weight of a high school male, right? But then he said, but every now and again, you're going to have a high school male that weighs 150 pounds, but he's the short, fat kid. Right. So what happens is when you look on average, everybody weigh hundred, but it's another person that meets that same description, but he doesn't look like the rest of them. He's an edge case. Most of the kids ain't short and fat. Most of them weigh 150 pounds because they tall and building muscle. Right. But the short fat kids, a couple of them out there. Everybody is not going to be the short fat kid. Everybody try to make themselves out to be this situation. That's super unique. That no, man, no, my baby mama did. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. You terrorized your baby mama. You was a weak leader to your baby mama. You didn't take accountability with your baby mama, right? You play games with your baby mama. And then, yeah, she reacted to the games you play because she don't know how to handle that stuff. She shouldn't have to have to know how to handle it because your butt 
shouldn't have been playing with her in the first place. So at the end of the day, guess who fault that is? It's always the man fault. It's always going to be the man fault. If you're going to be a leader, if you want to see yourself, if you want a woman to respect you and a woman to follow your lead, then that means it always is going to be your fault. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot point the finger at a woman and say, it's the woman fault, it's the woman fault. All she need to do is, is uh, be uh, submissive. What sense does that man? How you tell somebody to be submissive? How you, how you tell somebody to be submissive and then at the same time, you don't take accountability? Nobody is going to submit to that, right? Nobody is going to follow a leader that's going to run and shake every time a wolf comes. Right. Every time, every time the sheep is in danger, the shepherd is out of there. He running. Do it look like I'm about to follow him? There ain't nobody that's going to protect me. I need somebody that when the wolf come, I stand up like, yo, 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 I got the stick now. We can go at it and make the wolf think a couple times. Like, man, I'm going to come back when I get my buddies. Right. That's a leader. That's a shepherd. All this stuff is weak boy activity. Right. Everybody got to get called out. Books say if you don't take care of your family, you worse than an infidel. You worse than an unbeliever is what that means. Right. You worse than an unbeliever. Oh, these boys don't get no darn sympathy out of me. This is weak, weak boy activity. And y'all hate it when they put their hands on these women. Right. That's violence. He hate them to have violence. He hates y'all butts. Accept it. Eat it. Right? Eat it. Swallow it. He hates you. Now do something about it. Change your darn life. It shouldn't feel good when you hear the most high God hates you. Don't let these Christians and these other people try to, you know what I'm saying, play that darn boodle with your darn brain and soften the blow. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to hit you. It's supposed to hit you. You're supposed to feel it right here. When you read this book and you know it's talking about you, you're supposed to feel it right here. You know what I'm saying? And after you feel it, that's when you can do something about it. Let's get on back. I don't even know what I'm talking about no more. Where are we at? Ezra. This is Ezra chapter four. Right? So we saw how the Gentiles was talking about, you know what I'm saying? Let us, let us help out a little bit. I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to build with y'all. And then we was like, nah, y'all ain't got nothing to do with this. So we sent them back. But we see the origin of those Gentiles. Those Gentiles got got replaced in our land so they wasn't really from our land but they got taught what they thought was our excuse me what they thought was our customs but really it was the northern tribes perverted version of our customs so think of it like you know what i'm saying they they thought they was learning the bible but they really learned christianity you know what i'm saying or they thought they was learning the bible but they really learned judaism you know what i'm saying but they didn't really learn what the bible say you know what i'm saying they don't really learn what the what the law requires of us right keep going then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Right. So now the Gentiles got mad. They Karens. Now, these ain't white people, right? But they acting like white people. You know what I'm saying? They Karen. They, they popped up and they said. You know what I'm saying? No offense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they popped up and they said, they looking like, okay, we're going to have to be a Karen real quick. So they called out, and, or they wrote a letter, rather, and they, they wrote a letter to, to the king. You know what I'm saying? To the king that's in place. So remember, Cyrus is the one that gave us a decree. It was like, yeah, y'all can go. We've been working all these years getting stuff together. Now, the Gentiles are like, yo, let us help. Cyrus is no longer king. Right? It's another king in place. So now they write to the new king. And this is the letter that they wrote. Watch this. And in the days of Artaxerxes wrote Bishlam, Mithradath, Tabiel, and the rest of the com and, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Mm -hmm. Rehum, the chancellor, and Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king, in this sort. Then wrote Rehum, the chancellor, and Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the, the, Dina, the Dina, Dinaites and Arpachshadites, 
Arparshathites, and the Tepralites, and the Arparshites, and the Ar Archivites, the Babylonians, the, Shush the Shushites, the De Yehavites, and the Elamites, and the rest of the nations whom the great and noble and Asnapar brought over and set in the city of Samaria and the rest that are on this side, the river, and, all, and at such a time. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto them, even unto Artaxerxes the king. Thy servants, the men on this side, the river, and at such a time. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up walls thereof and joined the foundations. Be it right, so he said this is a rebellious and the bad. So they remember, they just got done saying, hey, let us help. We want to help build. We tell them no. All of a sudden now we get a letter. Y'all should know this is a rebellious and a bad city. This stuff, stuff don't sound familiar at all. This stuff still happened to us today. Right now, this stuff happened to our people, right? This is a rebellious and a bad city. Watch this. Be it known now unto the king that this, if this city be builded and the wall set up again, they will not pay toll, tribute, and custom. And so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. Now, mm -hmm. because we have maintenance from the king's palace and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor, therefore we have sent and certified the king. That search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers, so shall thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces, and they have moved sedition within the same of old time, for which cause was the city destroyed. We right? So what he's doing is he's telling them, he's like, look, if you search the records, you're going to find records that these boys have sedition and rebellion, right? He's saying, if you search the record, you're going to see these boys always causing problems to empires. So what you think the king going to do if he searched the records? He going to pull up what we just read with Hoshea, right? Hoshea was given the king of Asher, the, uh, the king of uh, Assyria. He was giving him gifts because that's what he had to do. That was the agreement. You pay your tolls. But then what did he do? He said, nah, man, I ain't going to do that. We're going to cut this stuff out. And he stopped sending gifts. But that's rebellion. That's why the king of Assyria came and got him. Right? But our king Hezekiah did the same thing. Y'all remember, y'all remember a little bit after that, the king of Assyria came and got Hezekiah too. And he surrounded it. And you remember he sent, he sent one of his uh, top generals and he is speaking over the wall. And remember he spoke in the Hebrew tongue and our leaders were like, no, 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 don't speak to him in Hebrew. Speak to him, you know what I'm saying? Just speak to us directly in your tongue. Don't let the people on the wall hear you. Right? And he was like, no, 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 I want the people on the wall to hear me. Remember what he was saying? He was saying, listen, don't let King Hezekiah help hype y'all up and think y'all can withstand my king. What other God and what other people would stop? We didn't took over everything is what he was telling. He was like, you think Yahuwah going to stop us? Right? He was talking big trash. But the whole point of what he was talking about is, look, if y'all give us horses, and I forgot everything he named, but pretty much if y'all start paying tribute to us, we'll leave y'all alone. That's what the whole fight was about. Because Hezekiah, he started off paying tribute, but eventually he rebelled. Right? And it happened throughout our history multiple times. Same thing with uh, Babylon. Right? You remember the king of, jo I mean, uh, King Josiah? King Josiah had Jehoahaz. And you remember Jehoahaz tried to team up with Egypt. Right? And then uh, Jehoiakim, he tried to do something too. I can't remember exactly what, but he rebelled too. So he stepped, he, the, the king of Babylon, he kept on replacing them boys because they rebelled against them, right? We, our start, right? If you take our very first start, uh, grab Exodus, Exodus chapter five. I just want y'all to see what you got to put yourself in this king. He getting this letter from these Gentiles, right? And he, he getting this letter, they writing to him in his language. They're not writing to him in Hebrew. They're writing to him in his language, right? So he's looking at it, and you got to put yourself in his mindset. What would you do in this situation? they building this stuff. Sure, another king before you told them they could do it, but these Gentiles making this, you know what I'm saying? Like, these people making a good point. 
Like, yeah, you right. These people are kind of rebellious. Because he's going to look in the history and he's going to find exactly that. This is Exodus chapter 5. Give me verse 1. It's Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says you who are God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is this Yahuwah that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Right? I'm the king. I'm Pharaoh. Who are you talking to me about? Some darn Yahuwah. Talking about, I said, let these people go. These are my servants. We got a nice thing going here. Everything been going well. From Pharaoh's point of view, Moses, you sound nuts. But watch what Moses say. And they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto Yahuwah our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence and with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, why do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works? Get you unto the burdens, unto your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick and he as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make the heretofore you shall lay upon them. You shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore, they cry, saying, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Right? This is an insurrection. This is a rebellion. The people were commanded to work. They stopped their work to gather around while Moses said, yo, let us go. That is rebellion. That's why he got mad. and He looked at it. He said, who told y'all because y'all can stop working? Okay, now do twice the amount of work with the same material. Since y'all got so much time to be stopped, to stop working and to come talk to me about letting y'all go and some darn Yahuwah that I don't know nothing about. Now we know how this story ends. He loses his old kingdom. So now when you read that in the history from the perspective of Pharaoh, you got this rebellious people and you lost your kingdom over this people. Okay, the same people go into their land and you got all these kingdoms around them. They rebel against all of them. They kill all the Canaanites. You got Ammon that they end up going to war with and taking over. You got all these different nations around them that they rebelled against. And then we end up, ended up eventually taking them over. Consistently. You got Assyria. They rebelled against. Assyria had to take them out. You got Babylon. They rebelled against. They had to take them out. So when the king looked at it from that perspective, he looking at what these Gentiles are writing and looking at it like, these boys might got a point, right? Watch what he say. Let's go back. This is Ezra chapter 4. What verse? Uh, verse 16. This is Ezra chapter 4, verse 16. Watch what, watch what, uh, watch what, you know what I'm saying, how they finish out this letter, and then let's look at how the king responds. We certify the king that if this city be built again and the wall set up by this means, thou shalt have no portion on this side of the river. Then sent the king an answer unto Rehum, the chancellor, and to Shemshai, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and said unto the rest, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace, and at such a time. The letter which you sent unto us has been plainly read before me, and I commanded in search has been made, and it is found that this city of old time has made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. Right. So the king king is writing back and he like, I did exactly what you said. I made search and I found it's exactly as you say. It. These boys is some rusty boy. I mean, these boys is tough to deal with. Right. Keep going. Watch this. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river and told tribute and custom was paid unto them. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease. And that this city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? Right. So he said, he said very clearly, all building in Israel has to stop. Right. Do not start. And they can't start again until they get a commandment from the king. 
right? That's important. So now, because of these Gentiles, we was excited. We back. We building our stuff up. We got the we got the uh, we got the uh, the altar. You know what I'm saying? And we but we laid the foundation. All the people looking at it, and we starting to build. We trying to get everything back together. But now we got to stop again, right? We gone seventy years. We down seventy years, right? And then now we finally get back. We spent some years trying to get everything back together, and now we got to stop again because these raggedy darn Gentiles. Right? Watch what happens. Take heed, oh, always. Now, when a copy of the King, when a copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Then ceased the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Right? So now Darius is the next king. So I know. We had a king before this named Darius too. Remember Darius, Cyrus, Artaxerxes. Those are really just titles. It's not their real names, right? So you have another king that goes by Darius, right? He comes also. And in his second year, they started to build again. So the king that said, you know what I'm saying? Until the commandment comes by me, he died. But remember, that's what he said. He said, the commandment has to come from me. He died. Right. So the book is saying that the building stopped until Darius second year. But let's see what happened in Darius second year. Keep going. Then the prophets Haggai, the prophet and Zechariah, the son of Ido, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of, of the God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel and Yahushua, the son of Jehozadak. And began to build the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. At right. The so time, now when the prophets came, the prophets have a word directly from the Most High God. And the prophet said, build it. So now they have a commandment from the Most High God to build it. So remember, this is how things always work. Right. Unless we have we always have to honor the highest authority. Y'all's authority is higher than everyone. So if y'all give us a commandment, it don't matter what nobody say, we need to do it. Absent y'all's commandment, then we need to relax. This is important because I assure you there will be times where people are going to tell us to do stuff that's against authority, but they're not going to be prophets. They're not going to be proven to be prophets of the Most High God. Some of them may call themselves prophets, but they're not going to be proven to be prophets of the Most High God. And we have to be careful when these times come, right? When the times come where it's time for, for, you know what I'm saying, some wild stuff to be happening and plagues is hitting this land or right before that, maybe it's going to be people that tell us to rebel and tell, tell us to, you know what I'm saying, break a couple rules and rebel against the authority and all that stuff. And it's going to feel strong when you hear it, just like now. It feel weak when somebody tell you. Okay, well, just do what the president says. Do what the city mayor says. Do what this, that, and other says. That feels weak, right? And it's going to feel weak when somebody tells you, like, nah, I'm probably, you know what I'm saying? If I'm living in that time, I'll probably be like, relax. He ain't the one. Mm -mm, he ain't proved it yet, right? It's going to feel weak. But if you end up follow, following after one of these boys and they not teaching the truth and they not true prophets of the Most High God, you're going to fall, you find yourself in the trap, right? So in this case, we waited for the prophets. We had two valid prophets. The two prophets came to us. They said, build. Because they said, build, well, now we're listening to the highest authority. So now we can build. It supersedes the king that died, right? So we started to build, and, uh, and, and we started to build in the uh, second year of Darius, right? Because Haggai came to us. So let's grab, let's grab Haggai. This is Haggai chapter 1, verse 1. This is Haggai chapter one, verse one, right? Because he came along as a prophet and he came to us and he like, yo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Y'all need to go ahead and build up this, this, you know what I'm saying? Build up this uh, temple. Y'all can start back up. Remember our people would have took, we would have relaxed because the authority already told us don't do it. But we, now we got to wait for y'all to move again, right? Darius came in. It's in the second year. Y'all ready to move now, right? So Haggai come and Haggai talk to us. Haggai chapter one, verse one.
Sorry, I'm trying not to rip my pages here. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahuwah by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Yahushua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh Yahuwah of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Yahuwah's house should be built. Then right, so this is what Haggai is saying to us to get us to build. Right, so the people are saying, man, the time ain't come. It's not time to build yet. Because we discourage about the authority. You have to think about the psyche, right? How our minds are working right now. We have trauma because we had our, our own land and we got removed from our land by a foreign king and God let it happen, right? So now it's time to rebuild this temple. We have a king telling us, yo, yo, y'all stop that. Don't build no more. That has to scare our people, right? Because we just got, we just got conditioned to obey these foreign kings. That was the condition that the Most High God put us under for 70 years. So you know what? You follow them, you obey them. So now it come through. God tell us to build a wall. King tell us, no, don't build it. Of course we're going to stop. So we looking like, no, nah, it ain't the time yet. You know what I'm saying? Don't build it. Okay. So Haggai comes like, okay, so the people think it ain't the time yet. Keep going. Watch this. Then came the word of Yehuda by Haggai the prophet saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your, your soiled houses and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus says Yehuda of hosts, consider your ways. Ye you have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but you are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earns wages, earns wages to put it into a bag with holes. All right, so he's saying, listen. You think it you think it's time? It's time for y'all to build y'all houses. Because remember, we all, not all of us, but a lot of people are living in our land now. A lot of the priests, they came back to the land. So they built their own houses, right? And they relaxing and they chilling. They looking like, nah, it ain't time to build that temple again. The king told us not to. Which makes sense, right? That's that's logical. But the most high God came back, so it's like, oh, so you could build your house, but it's cool that my house is just laid waste. Okay. Then he told him, consider your ways. You ain't, you ain't paid attention to what you're doing, right? You in the field all day putting seeds in the field. But you not pulling up a lot of harvest, right? You putting on a whole bunch of clothes, but you still cold. You making a whole bunch of money, but it's like your money is getting put into a sack with a bunch of holes in it. And your money is just falling through and you, you losing it, right? He's, he's, he's drawing pictures, but he's basically saying, you're doing a lot of work for little return. And why do you think that is? Right? The most high God is saying, I'm cursed. You're, you're cursed. That's the reason why it's like that. Right? It's like that because I'm making it like that. I'm not letting y'all prosper. And the reason why y'all not being blessed by me is because y'all haven't built my house. But watch this. Keep going. You look for much and low. It came too little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Says you who have hosts. Because of my house that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from the dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which is which the ground brings forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Yahushua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the women of the people, obeyed the voice of Yahuwah their God, in the words of Haggai the prophet, as Yahuwah their God had sent him. And the people did fear before Yahuwah. Then spake Haggai, Yahuwah's messenger, and the Lord, and Yahuwah's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, says Yahuwah. And Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Yahushua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God in the four and 20th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king. All right. So this is the second year of Darius the king. All right. Let's keep going. This is uh, chapter five. Uh, Ezra chapter five. No, no, no. This is, uh, I mean, chapter two. Sorry. This is uh, Haggai chapter two. Let 
in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of Yahuwah by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Yahushua, the son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it right, not so you remember, we were looking at it in uh, last week. We were looking at when they laid the foundation. You couldn't tell if they was crying or they was they was cheering, right? Because the older folks were crying because they remember what the temple looked like, right? They looking at it like, man, this ain't nothing like the other temple. The original temple, oh man, it's nothing like that one. But then the younger people who had never seen it, they just excited to be in our land. They looking like, oh man, we got our own land. We ain't got to live. You know what I'm saying? Out of these other people, I heard my mom and dad talk about this, so everybody else was excited. But it was this mixture, and you couldn't even tell if they were laughing or crying. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't tell if they were cheering or, you know what I'm saying, or, or having a lot of sorrow, right? So the Most High God is asking that same question, like, who's among y'all that remember what the temple originally looked like? Watch this. Who is it among you that saw the house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says Yahuwah, and be strong, Yahushua, son of Jehoshaphat. The high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says Yahuwah, and work, for I am with you, says Yahuwah of hosts. According to the word that I can covenant with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Fear not, for thus says Yahuwah of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says Yahuwah of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says Yahuwah of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, says Yahuwah of hosts. And it and in this place will I give peace, says Yahuwah of hosts. Right. When he say latter house, he wasn't really talking about that one that's right in front of him. He talking about the one at the end. He just saying in, in, in the end, oh, the glory, the glory of the house at the end is going to be nice. Right. But when they looking at it, when they hearing Haggai talk, they wouldn't consider that. They just thinking about, oh, okay, but the most high God gonna make what we build now more glorious. So it's encouraging to them. They looking like, okay, well, let's build this thing up then. Right? Even if it don't feel like it's nothing, that would sound encouraging. They would look at it like, okay, well, we're about to build something special. Right? Keep going. And it is special because that leads to Yahushua. Right? The temple that they building right now is gonna lead to what we read about in the gospels. All right? So we'll we'll get there. Keep going. In the four and twentieth day of the month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yahuwah by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, ask now the priest concerning the Lord. Hold on, it's the it's when the four and twenty what? The twenty-fourth day of the month. In the okay. second year of Darius. In the okay. came the word so of they Yahuwah. in the what eighth month? Go back to verse one. I just want to make sure we in the we, four and twentieth day of the ninth month, sorry. I missed that one. The ninth. That's the ninth month. Yeah, in the second year of Darius. Uh, grab hold hold. We got right there. Go to uh Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, uh, not Zerubbabel. <laughs> Zechariah. Go to Zechariah chapter one, oh. verse one. I should say what? <laughs> Go to Zechariah chapter one, verse one. Because Haggai, I think the first in the first verse of Haggai chapter two, I think it's the. If it's not, if I'm not mistaken, it's the eighth month. And then um, in the eighth I month, think, in the second year of Darius came the word of Yahuwah to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet. OK, so this is the eighth month. So this happens. So after Haggai talked, we just read some of Haggai. We're going to go back to Haggai. But after he did his original statement, then you had Zechariah that came in the eighth month of the second year. Right. So this is what Zachariah said after what we just read from Haggai. All this, I just want to show y'all all, all this is happening right on top. In the sixth month, the Haggai come again in the uh, seventh month. And then in the eighth month, you have uh, Zachariah coming. So they own us back to back, both of the prophets, and they speaking. And it's going to go back to Haggai after this. This is Zechariah chapter one, verse one. Let's see. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yahuwah unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, Yahuwah has been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, Turn ye unto me, says Yahuwah of hosts, and I will turn unto you, says Yahuwah of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts. 
Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, says Yahuwah. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I command my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned them, and Lord. said, like as Yahuwah of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so has he dealt with us. Mm -hmm. In other words, that word came true. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the right. So now we in the eleventh month. Oh, he say that he's warning the people like y'all better listen, right? Y'all better listen because y'all see what happens when the other prophets talk to y'all fathers and they die. It happened just like the other prophets said. So y'all better listen. So now let's go back to Haggai. It's Haggai. What verse we leave off on? Uh, ten, chapter two. Verse this is uh, Haggai chapter two verse ten. Watch the book say. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year. So now we're in the ninth month, right? So Haggai in the sixth month, the seventh month. Then we went to uh, Zechariah in the eighth month, and then Haggai started talking again in the ninth month. Zechariah just told him, "Y'all better listen to the prophets now." Y'all say y'all saw what happened to the old prophet. They took a hold. Didn't it happen just like the prophet said? Y'all better listen to him. So Haggai come back, and this is uh this is uh verse ten. Let's see. Haggai chapter 2, verse 10. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then Haggai, then said Haggai, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, so is this people, and so is this right. nation before me, says Yahuwah. Right, so the Haggai is telling them, I just gave y'all a parable, and y'all answered it correctly. And that's exactly how y'all are, right? So what he explained is, he's basically saying, in the way that the law is set up for holiness, right? You can't make something holy just by being holy. So if I go through all the consecration and I've been set apart and been made clean, right? The most High God put the water on me. I get baptized or whatever, whatever ceremony we use to make me clean. I'm clean. Right. And then there's unclean. There's an unclean dead animal over there. I can't go and touch that dead animal and make that dead animal clean. The opposite happens. By me touching that dead animal, it makes me unclean, but I can't make it clean just by touching it. So he's saying that's the same way we are as a people, right? We don't make stuff clean by touching it. We become unclean and we've been made unclean, right? Because we've been around these Gentiles. We've been made unclean. Watch this. Keep going. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. Mm -hmm. And now I pray you, consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of Yahuwah. Since those days were, when one came to a heap of 20 measures, there were but 10. When one came to the press fat for to draw out 50 vessels out of the press, there were but 20. I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with hail in the labors of your hands. Yet ye turn not to me, says Yahuwah. Right, he said, all, all these things has happened to you, but you won't consider, you won't turn to me. Y'all probably remember another prophet that had this same message for us. We don't have to go get it, but the prophet Amos, right? So if we look at where the prophet, prophet Amos was, that's probably, that's almost 400 years ago, right? From the time that we are, that was 400 years prior, where Amos said almost the same thing. Most high God is sending famine on you. And he's and he's and he's tearing up your fields and he's sending pestilence after you and all this stuff happened and you won't turn from your evil ways and consider. And it's the same thing that have you happen up. We'd be sitting there complaining like, dang, my tire blew out and then my battery died. And then, you know, what I'm saying they moved my position at work and made me work in the mail room. And then they docked my pay and I didn't get this and I didn't get that. And we'd be looking like, why is this happening to me? I'd be feeling like. 
most high God looking like, and you still ain't considered. Like, perhaps you change your behavior. Perhaps you change your faith. Perhaps you change some things and work after me. Right? But we don't want to work after the most high God. We want to live our life. We want to have our cake. We want to eat it too, as they say. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no sense not to have a cake and eat it. You know what I'm talking about? But as they say, you know what I'm saying? I want to eat the cake and keep the full slice of cake that I just took a bite out of. How that makes sense? How you take a bite out of the cake and you still got a full slice yeah, like you never took a bite out of it? You can't have it both ways. If you eat the cake, you no longer have it. Right? That's just how it works. I want some cheesecake right now. Right now, I want some cheesecake. You know what I'm saying? But that's how it works. All right? Keep going. Consider now from this day and upward, from the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month, even from the day of the foundation of Yahuwah's temple was laid, consider it. If the seed yet in the barn, is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive trees has not brought forth from this day will I bless you. And again, the word of Yahuwah came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak unto Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says Yahuwah of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, says Yahuwah, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, says Yahuwah of hosts. He said, I will make you, Zerubbabel, as a signet, for I have chosen thee. Zerubbabel is taking the position of a governor right now. That's him right here. Only because he can't have the title of king. Zerubbabel is a descendant of David, right? So he it's possible that he could have actually been king. But right now, we're not allowed to have that title, right? So he's positioned as a governor. So he's calling the shots. He's running the show. The Most High God said, I'm going to make Zerubbabel a signet. In other words, a sign. We're going to talk about that next week, right? We're going to talk a little bit more about Zechariah and the prophecies that he has for Zerubbabel and Yahushua, who we read now is, you know, in the book is written as Joshua, right? But those two, right? He gonna, he, we're going to have a lot of prophecy about those two, and we're going to try to understand it, what the implications are. What is Zerubbabel going to be a sign about? Find out next time, next episode. Dragon right. Ball Z. Any questions? Any questions? Hey, boy, hey, hey, you, can't, on. you can't do nothing with these darn boys. No. Right. Hey, man. Any questions? Nah, I ain't see no questions. All right. Let's pray out.